Welcome back. Another 21 hours has come and gone. We have a very good program tonight for you, as we always try to assemble. And Clark McClellan will start things off tonight. For those of you who have been listening for some time, Clark has a, a fascinating background. He has served this country as a patriot, as a scientist with the Space Shuttle Program. His book and website are called The Stargate Chronicles. It has to do with astronauts seeing things, having experiences that they don't normally talk about. Clark, with his background working in the shuttle program at a very high level, got to know these people and heard things and saw things and experienced things by talking and interacting with staff and astronauts and other scientists that he has decided to put them in a book. Uh, it's, it's a remarkable story. It's available at lulu.com. If you click on Clark's website, you can go right there and pick it up. Uh, he's been on the program several times in the past. Let's find out. Are you there now, Clark? I'm here. Welcome. Thank you, too, and let's get going. I've got a lot to talk about. <laughs> All right. There is, of course, a great number of UFO videos on YouTube that uh, were taken in and around the space station, around shuttle missions and so forth. Uh, most people try to dismiss them as ice crystals and so forth. But when you simply watch them and study them, it's obvious that there's something going on there. All right, uh, let's let's uh, hitch up the team and, and move them out, Clark. Go right ahead. Okay, I'm, I'm going to come on tonight with the fifth moon mission that landed on the moon. Well, okay. the fifth moon mission, but the fourth that landed there, 13, of course, went out around and came back. And I call that our most successful Apollo mission to the moon because we saved three lives. Right. Uh, this is about my friend NASA astronaut and first NASCAR lunar rover car driver on the moon. Okay. He, was, he saw UFOs above the moon and he saw crystal crystal buildings. So we okay. can get to that. Now, he, I, now that's an obvious uh, story that I've heard about, we've yeah. talked about in the past, and yeah. there have been representations of uh, this story on the internet. But well, uh, I can't wait to hear what you have to say about it. But go right ahead with this. This is very uh, he good. Flew, he flew on Apollo 15 with Dave Scott and Al Warden. It was James Irwin, my friend from Pittsburgh. We were both born in the same city. Uh-huh. And he flew there. And uh, let me say what we can get to now. Uh, he formed, when he came back, the High Flight Foundation in Colorado Springs. And, and then I met him again at the Philadelphia airport by sheer accident. Yeah. I mean, thousands of people. I see his face, he sees mine, and we waved, and we, we sat oh, down for a discussion. Uh -huh. What he told me at that discussion for 40 or so minutes is astounding because he left the Temple University lecture. I was going in for a lecture at Temple myself that evening. So oh, too funny. Yeah. Well, coincidences, you know, they happen, but then sometimes there are other things at work, so that must have oh, been yeah. amazing. Oh, yeah. Okay, James Irwin. Right. James Irwin. Not the most famous name amongst astronauts, but a name that uh, is certainly right in the midst of it all. Um, yeah. Pittsburgh, he knew you when you sat down with him at no, the airport? I yeah, I didn't meet him in Pittsburgh. I met him at Kennedy Space Center mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. we were working on the Apollo 10 preparation for that mission, the first to go out around the moon mm -hmm. in 1968, I believe it was. Right. And my mind's getting a little bit... <laughs> I'm 77 now, so I had to recall a hell of a lot of stuff here. <laughs> well, you sound terrific, and as well, always. Now, let me ask you a question. Go ahead. When you sat down with, with Jim... Did he have any reservations? Was he concerned about talking to you about oh. these things at all? Well, he said, Clark, I know what you want to talk about, your favorite subject, UFOs. I, and we both smiled. I said, yes. He said, Clark, I can say certain things, but there are things I cannot because we were all hushed up about our mission by NASA and the DOD to shut up and not talk about things or lose their retirement or maybe worse. You know, I lost my retirement. I have nothing but Social Security to live on. And I'll be honestly frank about people who are listening. You cannot live on Social Security. And I tried. And I'm trying to help my daughter who's out of work. Mm -hmm. So so that's the bad news. If people out there can help me by opening and reading my books on www.stargate-chronicles.com, 
I would appreciate that very much. My health is very bad now. I don't know how long I'm going to be around. I've got about, uh, I'd say, maybe about 38 more chapters that I could release. I don't know if I'll live that long, though. Well, you you better. No checking out early, Clark. you got work to do. I know that. I We've been my, friends a long time, and you you uh, you you have a, my highest admiration and esteem. So I let's have, get this stuff out there. I have a health problem with my left leg from sugar now, and the the pain from the wounds I have are so excruciating I can't sleep at night. They're no. that bad. I'm not lying. Please. No, Clark. I uh, for those of you listening, I I've known Clark for a long time. He does not exaggerate. And no, I don't. Uh-uh. No. Anyway, no. what you got a question for? Well, go ahead and tell us uh, when okay. James Irwin sat down with you and, and he asked you, uh, yeah. obviously, the obvious question, uh, what do you want to talk about? I think I know. Yeah. Uh, do, let's talk about the conversation. How did okay. it proceed? Well, he said, I'll talk about some things, Clark, but there are some I cannot. And I said, I understand, Jim. And what year was this again, Clark, approximately? Uh, his flight was in 1971. All right. And they landed at the... Uh, at the uh, uh, the uh, Apennine area of the moon, mm-hmm. and it's mountainous. And you're meeting with him? I was meeting with him at an airport lunches, luncheon. What year? Uh, 1979. Uh, nine, okay. He did his lecture at Temple, and I did one that year. There. Okay. Eight, eight years difference from yeah. the uh, time it happened. Yeah. Now, uh, was he... Afraid? Was he simply under national security and NASA s- stricture? Well, uh, he had, he had well, already retired, Jeff, mm-hmm. and he had fears. He had fears because there were threats of dis- of discontinuing their health benefits, their retirement, like happened to me. Same and thing. He, he said, I can't chance that, Clark, with my family. And I said, I understand that, Jim. I said, I will never say a thing about this unless you or I die. <laughs> Of course, okay, if I right. died, I couldn't say anything. That would be a tough trick. Uh, yeah, he, he knew He knew what I meant. Yeah, okay. But anyway, he knew I was NICAP director at the Kennedy Space Center, National Investigation Committee on Aerial Phenomena. And uh, he said, okay, UFOs, Clark. I said, uh, what do you want to know? He said, what do, you, uh, what do you want to know, my good friend? So I asked him. I heard an uplink up and down link from commentary while the launch control center at the launch control center at Kennedy Space Center, Pad 39, and David Scott or somebody was indicating that they were seeing unknown objects overhead. And uh, Jim said, that's true. He verified that. He said that the uh, unknown objects were very swift and they were very tiny. I said, tiny? He said, yeah, maybe four maybe about a foot or two long. I said, my God, that sounds like uh, Gulliver's Travels. He said, well, God makes creatures in every way and shape and form. And I said, amen. Wow. Well, now, Jim Irwin, for those of you who don't know, um, did pass in uh, 1991. Yeah, he passed away. He was uh, a very handsome uh, fellow. Oh, he was. He looked like a movie star in, in yeah. some ways. He was and, a wonderful person and very, yeah. very honest. Yeah. Well, they all, all are. Most all of them are. They, I mean, look, there, there's a YouTube video out there in which some, somebody approached a number of the astronauts yeah. asking them if they would simply swear on the Bible that yeah. they, you know, yeah. the, you know the deal. Yeah. And some of them became, none of them would do it, uh, that, that they didn't see anything up there. They wouldn't make that statement. Yeah. No, and, no they, they backed off because when I asked uh, Jim, you know of other astronauts who have seen things like this? He said, yes, Clark, but I will not name them. So hmm. probably each of the Apollo missions to the moon had sightings of something or another. Strange, maybe even E.T., Apollo 11. Well, we've seen that the photo of the large fellow standing in the open bay of the space shuttle. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that was our last program, I think. That was amazing. Yeah. Well, I did see that eight to nine foot tall uh creature. I, I can't say it was an alien. I don't know. Then I saw a craft hovering behind our, our shuttle. An eight to nine foot creature with two small NASA astronauts receiving orders from this giant. Well, we have a photo of that too. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. There's a photo on my, on my website. Amazing.